Hey guys, it's Carl. We just finished off WWDC 2022. Great to be back in person. Great to be back at Apple Campus as my little badge is kind of floating around. So we just saw a lot of software updates. Obviously the first one is the new iOS, iOS 16. So obviously the biggest overhaul here is coming to the visuals, just trying to get more information more accessible to the user. The first thing that they talked about was the new updated and redesigned lock screen. So now these new lock screens are just more customizable. You can change the different themes, the different colors. You can actually change each of the fonts. You can actually have different lock screens for different purposes. And that really ties into focus. So for example, if you have different focus points for say work, you can have a work lock screen that swipes up into a work related home screen or home page. One for personal with maybe all your social media stuff and the last one for do not disturb so you can really customize each of your lock screens and your corresponding home page so I think will be a lot of new home setups or these setup videos how to customize your iPhone on YouTube I'm sure I'll make one myself but it's just interesting to see that you have different options now a lot more customizable and just gives you a ton more flexibility the next thing coming to messages was probably actually mine and Nick's as well favorite update of the entire keynote so now you can actually unsend messages. I know we always make mistakes. Uh, you auto correct to the wrong thing. You send something that you don't intend to. You can now take back that message or unsend it. And that new unsend feature is actually linked to the new Mac OS Venture update. I might create a separate video on that, but in the mail app, you can now actually unsend an email. So once again, we all accidentally send emails without uh, proofreading them or there's mistakes. You can unsend that, make that quick edit and resend it back out. You can also edit a text that has already been sent. That's really useful if you just make a quick little typo, just change that after it's been sent or after the fact. And lastly, you can unread a group message just so you can have it for later on in case you're just doing something and you're a bit busy. The next big change coming to dictation, typically that is just your voice and you can't make that update with any text input. Now the keyboard stays open so you can use both your voice to dictate and make any updates or quick changes with the keyboard. Dictation now also adds punctuations and emojis. So if you say, um, hey, this is the greatest video ever, exclamation point, happy face, smiley face, thumbs up, subscribe emoji. It's my selfless plug for the day. That also is now added. One really cool thing that got a pretty big uh, applause from the crowd was visual lookup. So say you have a photo of, I think they used an example of a bulldog in a standard photo. You can actually click the bulldog or click the dog. You can copy and paste just the dog Obviously AI is built into that and send that off in a separate message or bring that somewhere else. It'll just take the cutout of the dog or whatever image you're trying to look up and extract that from that photo. New updates to wallet. I think those are really linked to where you live. So Maryland and Arizona, for example, you can now have your driver's license integrated into the wallet app. And the last update to pay through the wallet is pay later. So you can split your payment into four separate payments, zero interest and over a six week period. So the first payment up front, and then the next three over a six week period. So every two weeks. Quick little maps update. Once again, very dependent on which region you're in. Updated a couple new cities and a new 3D view in Las Vegas. So I think kind of useful if you go to the city and especially for that F1 formula race that's gonna be there next year that we're trying to get to. Would be cool to see that entire circuit uh, go through the strip. That's what I was thinking of. A quick little photos update. You can now share photos that you've taken into a family library. So it's just easier for multiple people to get access to them. And the thing that I thought was cool, you can change that on a camera. So say every shot that you can take will automatically go to that specific shared library. Super useful actually for an event like today. If I'm sharing something with Nick, we can just have all the photos dumped into one library and we can just look through all those photos together. The home app got a huge update. I know that we're all trying to build the perfect smart home as I build out my place. Hopefully it is uh, as smart as some of Apple's demos, but they're divided into separate rooms and into different categories. So things like smart lights, humidity, or I guess temperature, security. You can scroll through all the different devices you have and they're working with different, not only developers, but brands to ensure any device you have can still integrate into the home app. And lastly, CarPlay, and they didn't label this as CarPlay 2.0, which I think it should receive a pretty big update because the new UI overhaul is pretty massive. We'll see the updates coming to cars coming sometime at the end of next year, but the entire dashboard, the entire UI, you'll be able to customize your entire auto dashboard, whether that's your tachometer, whether that's your maps, and really fine tune it to your personal driving style. 
I will say it will require a card that has a full digital dash that is RIP to the traditional analog tachometer. Part of me dies on the inside as a, a bit of an old schooler with still a six speed, with still uh, having three pedals. I'm not the biggest fan, but I know we're going towards that shift of all digital, all EV. Um, I'll just be a dinosaur and hold on to my gasoline engine car, unless Apple releases a car, which was also a bit of a rumor. I wish they hinted that as a bit of an Easter egg. I'm sure we'll see it happen. Um, but anyways, that is iOS 16 kind of wrapped up. Let me know your favorite update down below. Make sure you're subbed for WWDC coverage and enjoy one of my next videos, which we'll leave up here. We'll catch the rest of you in one of those ones. Peace.